Sagittarius, Andromeda, the Pleiades, Arcturus. Ah, Arcturus. Good evening. Am I addressing Mr. Charles Caldwell Fleming? Yes. Jeremiah Todd, Mr. Fleming, from the Thanatos Society. Yes, I've been expecting you. Come in, please. Well, excuse me, just a matter of protocol. As the authorized representative of the Society, I must have at least 24 hours has elapsed since you called the Society and requested our aid. That's right. Two, that during that time you have not changed your mind or in any way altered your plans. No. And finally, that within the next half hour, you request our aid and assistance in putting an immediate end to your life. Am I correct? Yes. Very well. I'll come in. Oh, beautiful, Mr. Fleming. I must say, this is really beautiful. Well, thank you. I found it comfortable. How clear the sky is tonight. Oh, fantastic. I was admiring the stars on my way over here this evening. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Arcturus, that's my favorite one, too. How nice. Mr. Fleming, I certainly have admired your work in architecture down through the years. I must say, I'm one of your biggest fans. Although, I suppose, further accolades are unnecessary, aren't they? Thank you. Please sit down. Excuse me. Have you no sense of loss at leaving all this? Well, if I had, Mr. Todd, you wouldn't be here, would you? Touche. May I sit down over there? Of course. That is, if it's convenient. Thank you. Well, let's get on with the preliminary, shall we? Now, as you must know from reading your society handbook, it is mandatory to read the credo of the Thanatos Society prior to commencement of the ritual of Terminus. Here, you can follow along with this copy. Thank you. Oh, by the way, are we, uh, are we alone? Is there anyone else? Uh, uh, no one. Good. All right. <clears throat> the Thanatos Society is a select fellowship of men and women who share deeply and without reservation a common commitment to the following moral and spiritual convictions. One, a human being is his own personal exclusive property. Two, insofar as he causes no physical harm, injury, or disturbance to any individual or to society as a whole, a human being may do with his life what he so wills. Three, any man has the innate right to put an end to his mortal existence whenever he so desires and for whatever reason he deems proper. He alone rules his ultimate destiny. Are there any questions? You are clarity personified. You seem to be in an excellent frame of mind, Mr. Fleming, amazingly composed. A uh, task-oriented, Mr. Todd. An enviable quality, sir. Number four, the actual terminating procedure to the point of death will be accomplished in no more than one half hour. It is now 8.04. The member is urged to have all legal and business matters in final arrangements so uh, that... My the... attorney has taken care of everything. Last will and testament? In his safe. Uh, there are two copies on my desk. Tidy. Since it would be neither wise nor prudent to have an official of the society report the death, the member will arrange to have a friend or relative... Uh... My attorney has instructions to call here the first thing in the morning. If there's no answer, he's, he's to, to come, come here, here immediately. Me Excellent. Thank Excellent, you. sir. Thank you. Number five, no alcohol. Have uh, you been... I rarely drink. May I offer you something? Please, Mr. Fleming, I am presiding over a final commitment. I beg your pardon. Now, number six, visitors and communications. Will there be any visitors? My daughter and my son, they'll arrive separately. I'll make sure their visits are brief. Your wife will not be a visitor? We've been divorced for 17 years. Mm -hmm. Just as well. Unpleasantry should be avoided at a time like this. Now, about this son and daughter, 
Are you close? I mean, do you see them regularly? Not regularly, and not recently. Been years, as a matter of fact. My wife made my visits to them so impossible, I gave up long ago. All right, Mr. Fleming, now to the final point. It... Would you like me to answer that? Never mind, I'll okay. get Hello? Charles? Charles Fleming? Who's this? This is Mr. Taylor, Charles. Taylor? I don't know any... I have wonderful news for you, Charles. You've received a two-year scholarship to Thornton Polytech, the finest in the country. Gosh, thanks, Mr. Taylor. I, I don't know what to say. I won't disappoint you. Oh, you won't, Charles. I've seen hundreds of boys through my classes, none of them like you. You can do anything you want. You have an unlimited future ahead of you, Charles. Anything wrong? Uh, clock stop. What time have you got? Uh, 808. Sir? Uh, nothing. Uh, let's get on with it, shall we? Uh, yes, of course, Mr. Fleming. Now, the final point. You neglected to state what method you prefer to use to terminate your life. Well, in your handbook, I believe it's listed as number 17, a uh, prolonged euphoria, arising to the highest state of biochemically induced consciousness than instant death, a uh, crossover, excuse me. I must say, I admire your choice. Prolonged euphoria. Slower, but much more enchanting. I'm sure. It's so much more aesthetic than, what, knives or handguns or mm -hmm. sleeping pills. But prolonged euphoria will take a minimum of 20 minutes, so I think perhaps we had better get started here. Uh, what does that involve? First, this unique chemical punk compound. Just a few drops in an ordinary plain glass of water and drink it down. Oh, uh, uh, may I? In and of itself, it is nothing more nor less than a, than a catalyst. It, uh, it will not affect your bodily functions in any way. It merely prepares your body for that final beautiful option that will send you winging on your way. Uh, this won't affect my state of consciousness. No, 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 no. You'll be just as, uh just as mentally alert as you are at this very moment. Mm. Oh, some of our subjects do experience a few side effects. Oh? Yes, mild hallucinations, very pleasant and colorful, I'm told. Also a certain amount of weightlessness and uh, an unusual ability to see or hear at great distances. Nothing at all disagreeable. Well, here's to nothing disagreeable. Skull! Not bad. So now we wait. Huh? Yes. 20 minutes, right? It is 8.11. You should be ready for the final step at 8.31. Just enough time for some pleasant anticipation. <sighs> anticipation. That's what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, I've never liked the idea of it coming suddenly, a heart attack or an automobile accident. I'd feel cheated. What was it the man said? The most thrilling moment in life is death. Yes, yes! If a man can arrange it properly, why should he rob himself of that last great expectation? Well, in my own case, for example, I have arranged... Oh, now, Mr. Fleming, I'm sure you don't want to be Might disturbed be one of my time. children. Hello? This line is in use. I, I, I'm speaking to Watkins Jewelers. Who? Would you please get off the line? It's all right, Mrs. Fleming. I can hear you just fine. I wonder who that was. Oh, yes. As I was saying, Mr. Watkins, well, we we just do not have the cash money to help our son Charles finish his course at, at the Thornton Polytechnic. Well, and, I, I surely feel for you, Mrs. Fleming, but I uh, don't Mr. see Mr. Watkins, how... you know that fancy brooch pin that your wife Thelma has been admiring all these years? I certainly do. Ain't allowed to forget it. <laughs> but, Mr. Watkins, Christmas is just around the corner. 
Now, why not give it to Thelma as a, as a Christmas present? Well, I don't know. How much are you asking for it? $500. Well, suppose we say... Well, no, no, $500 even. Not a penny less. <laughs> Mary Fleming, you're getting the best of me. All right, it's a deal. My Thelma gets her brooch. Young Charlie gets his education. I get my wife off my back. But what about you? What do you get? Mary Fleming's got everything, Mr. Watkins. Mary Fleming's got her son. There's nothing under the stars more important than him. They're dead. Why would I hear their voices? Whose voices? Never mind, forget it. What the? Is something upsetting you, Mr. Fleming? Oh, that damn clock. Well, what about it? 8.13, 8.13, right on the button. Now, tell me, sir, what, pro what prompted you to make this final decision? There always has to be a reason. Well, for example, did you decide to terminate because of some physical condition? I had a complete checkup last month, excellent in all departments. Your mental and emotional stability, depressions, feelings of rejection? None. Are you lonely? I'm alone, I'm not lonely. I have my friends, we see each other quite often. How about female companionship? I have a mistress, with all the attributes of a good mistress. She's quite satisfactory. Love? Oh, for God's sake, Mr. Todd, you sound like a schoolboy. She's my mistress. She's beautiful, she's compliant, she fulfills a function. Does anything more have to be said? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pry. What about business and financial worries? My accountant estimates my net worth at twelve and a half million dollars. I see. Well, then, uh, your former wife, your marriage. Meaningless. A prolonged blind date that should have ended with a first introduction. <laughs> Neatly put. What about your children? No remorse on that score? No, no. Aside from the fact that I sired them, we're strangers. They've always been provided for handsomely. They'll be well taken care of after I've left the scene. All right, Mr. Fleming, you've answered all my questions and I still seem to have nothing. There must be some reason why you want to terminate your life. I'm bored, Mr. Todd. Completely, utterly, totally bored. I'm bored with this world. I'm bored with its people. I'm bored with its existence. Does that answer your question? Bored? Bored. B-O-R-E-D. And that's why I'm leaving. Uh, terminating, excuse me. Surely within the realm of logic, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, Mr. Fleming. It's just that you're so... Well, you're so composed, so relaxed. You see, most of our subjects, when they come down to the final hour, tend to be... I'm not cooler. like most of your subjects. No, I'd certainly say that you would not. Oh, that must be my daughter. Oh, well, I expect you'll want to visit with her alone. Is there some place I could wait? Yes, in the library. Thank you. Oh, uh... I beg your pardon. I'm not sure I have the right floor. Does Mr. Charles Fleming live here? Hi, Mr. Fleming. Well, Daddy, I'm Tina. Why, Tina, come in, child. Well, I'm not so sure I like the child bit. You know, I saw a picture of you in the paper a while back. You're much more handsome in person. Sexy and much younger. As a matter of fact, I think you're almost too young to be my father. Let's see, how old are you now? 21, 22? 22. I'm old enough to be your father. Come on in, sit down. Can I get you something to drink? Uh, bourbon rocks. Wow! Isn't this some kind of pair? Well, now I believe all those stories about you being the most sought-after single man in town. Is that what makes a man sought-after? The quality of his uh, pay ad? Well, it sure don't hurt none, honey. Well, for a girl born and bred in New York, you certainly have a lot of self in the mouth. How did that happen? Well, I guess I picked it up during my college years in Atlanta. Same school mother went to. What's wrong? Don't you care for it? Not particularly. All right, I'll drop it. 
You said on the phone it would be a short visit, and I have a friend waiting. Yes, of course. Well, what have you been up to lately? Do you have any special plans for the future? No. I'm just having a good time for myself. Maybe later I'll go back to art school. Or maybe I'll take a volunteer job in the ghetto, helping the poor people. Oh, what does your mother think of that? I haven't told her. I don't see too much of her these days. I have my own apartment. I can understand that. Daddy, can I ask you something? Sure. Why is it, after all these years, why does she hate you so much? Because I left her to keep my sanity. Well, after a few years, it was obvious that our marriage was... Well, she wouldn't get a divorce, so finally I did. A flower of the deep south scorned. <laughs> she never forgave me. I suppose I should feel sorry for both of you, but I can't. I admire your honesty. I've never really known either one of you. Tell me about you and your brother. Are you close? Do you see each other often? No, not very. Steve's on a big head trip, kind of a philosopher. He thinks a lot. I don't grab much of that. I just like to live, that's all. No questions. I see. Well, maybe you have it solved, my dear. Daddy, you said on the phone you wanted to see me and Steve because you were going away for a long time. Yes, I'm, um, I'm transferring my headquarters, um, Australia, I think, maybe New Zealand. In any event, I'll be gone quite some time, and I, uh, well, it's quite possible I may not be seeing you again. Do you mean never? Probably not. So it's just hello and goodbye. I wish I'd gotten to know you better. I wish I could believe that. No offense, Dad. And no complaints. I understand Steve and I are big names in your will. As long as you stay away from casinos and racetracks, you'll never have any money problems. Then there isn't a hell of a lot more to say, is there? I'm afraid not. Well, thanks for having me over, Daddy. It was a real trip. I'll remember you every time I break a thousand dollar bill. I trust her visit was not upsetting for you, Mr. Fleming. It went all right under the circumstances. Why don't you just relax while I prepare your final medication? Oceans of stars, undiscovered, whole galaxies by the billions, by the trillions, uncounted. One unmarked universe stretching into another and another. Eternities unseen. And the bird of time is on the wing. Mr. Fleming? Who are you? How did you get in here? I'm your son, Steve. You said you wanted to see me. Oh, Steve. Yes. Well, I'm certainly happy to see you, son. Same here, Dad. I'm sorry I can't shake your hand. I can't explain it, but it doesn't mean there's any hard feelings, believe me. Oh, that's all right. I, as a father, I'm not on very firm ground myself. You're uh, 18 now, right? 19. I had a birthday last week. You know, it really is good seeing you, Dad. Well, uh, can I offer you something? A beer, soft drink? No, thanks. I know I was still in the playpen when you and Mom got divorced, and I haven't seen you since, but I remember you. Oh, come on, Steve. That's, that's rather unlikely. No, I mean it. It's vague, of course, but I remember you. The face, the voice. Well, that's remarkable. Yeah. I missed you too, Dad. A hell of a lot. What I saw from the playpen was vague, but it was there. And it was strong. At least strong enough to remember when it wasn't there anymore.
It's a rough one to follow. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it as a put-down. It's just something I feel. The kid in the playpen and his father lasted a split second. The kid with his father in the penthouse, that lasts another. Whatever went in between can't matter because it's gone. It's history. Yes. It's time lost. Dad, lost time doesn't exist. I mean, why do you even bother thinking about it? Now is the time. Start living now. You know your sister was right. She said you're a philosopher. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Why not? You're going to commit suicide tonight. Why? What makes you think that? Oh, come on, Dad. I know. Isn't that enough? All right, so you know. Why did you bother to come? To tell you you're wrong. To try to make you see you're wrong. Steve. My mind's made up. You still haven't answered my question. Why do you want to kill yourself? Maybe that's none of your business. I think it is. Well, what possible claim can you have on how I conduct my life? Or dispose of it? I fathered you, granted. My sperm fertilized a human ovum. You're the end product, a, a thin biological link. But beyond that, that, there's nothing. We're strangers. We're both human beings. We both live on the same planet. Now, that's a relationship. Oh, for God's sake, Steve, spare me that have my share of this planet. There's nothing left for me here, this, this stupid plastic box. I'm smothering in it. I want to get out. I want what comes next. Out there, the stars, the universe, God, eternity. Can you think of anything that can possibly match that? No. You're damn right. One big oversight. What's that? It's not your universe, and they're not your stars. It's not your planet, it's not your ball game. I never said it was. No, you're right. The box is space and time, but that's just a scene. So what's the oversight? You're just another actor. Actor? Like the rest of us, not the producer. Well, what's that got to do with it? You work the run of your show for as long Steve, as your show runs. what are you runs. talking about? Nobody has the option to quit. So live your life, Dad. Wait your turn. You try and push it, you could blow the whole deal. No, Steve. My life belongs to me. Does it? What about your mother? Your father, your teacher, and friends, they were a part of your life, part of you. That's past. That's all past. From now on, I play it as I see it. If I'm making a mistake, I'll answer for it. Either way, I'm ready. Dad, you're not ready, and you are making a mistake. Well, let's say that I'm willing to gamble. Whatever's out there, I want it. Dad, please, I don't have much time. I've got an appointment. Well, that makes two of us. God bless, son. Be happy. Hang in there. Yeah, right. Like you're hanging in, huh? Oh, Steve, we're different people, different lives. No two of them are the same. You're a liar and a thief. You're taking something that doesn't belong to you. Now, that life you're trying to flip off, it's only a loan. You didn't earn it. Nobody earns it. It's a gift. That's right. Freely offered, freely accepted. No conditions, no fine print. I do what I want with it. One big exception. You can't take the gift. Use it and throw it back in the face of the giver. I'm not expecting anyone. I am. Hang on a minute. Mr. Charles Fleming? Yes, what is it? It's about your son, Steve. Oh. May I come in? Well, well, why? I'm afraid it's not very good news. Uh, okay, what's the problem? Your wife asked us to notify you personally. About what? Your son, Mr. Fleming. He was shot and killed late this afternoon in Lincoln Park. Steve? My son is... When was this? This afternoon, sir. 5.18. Apparently, there was no motive for the crime. The suspect was mentally deranged. He didn't even know your son. I see. Just a senseless killing. No motive whatsoever. Thank you for telling me.
I am terribly sorry, Mr. Fleming. He was only 19. He had so much promise. Take heart, sir. In a few moments, it will all be history. That's it? The final step. Gentle euphoria, off into the night. Drink it slowly and steadily. Every single drop. There you are, sir. It is tasteless, Mr. Fleming. Drink it down. Drink, sir, drink. It's time. Steve, you win. I beg your pardon. On your way, make a turn around Arcturus. Give him a wave for me. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests.